Hello and welcome to uh, week five tutorial, Penciling Your Page, part B. Hope everyone is checking out these tutorials, enjoying what being created here on the holler. I would like for you to uh, communicate more with us. Like, get on there, it's a community. This program is going to be um, uh, an opportunity unlike we've ever seen in, in the KVEC region, in the 18 re uh, counties participating. But also, if, um, if you're just interested in learning how to pick up different tools and techniques when it comes to drawing, then these videos are really going to help you get an understanding of the foundation, um, the, the building blocks, if you will, in, in creating a finished uh, product, whether it's with cartooning, illustration, or anything in between. Graphic design, there's a whole range of different areas we can go down. But for penciling your page part B, we're going to be looking at a few examples of pages from early sketches using circles and shapes and other types of uh, objects um, uh, put together as a foundation to draw more detailed aspects of the illustration upon. Um, remember the Marvel method. When we re reference this, we want to go back to that. Remember those circles and those shapes. We're going to be going uh, from the whiteboard here, the smart board, to uh, the desktop and a few things. So first we're going to be looking at a couple of um, examples uh, here on the smart board and then we'll be also looking at a more close up version of these examples um, on the table. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and, and get started. Now, these videos, I'll say this before we start, these videos are actually um, a part of um, the, the art gallery workshop. So they're, they're different tutorials that are going together uh, for anyone interested in, in creating their own uh, written uh, illustrated book, chapter book, graphic novel, uh, picture book, or comic book. So um, I hope you access these and use them often. And you can even go back to them later on whenever you're drawing uh, just yourself, okay? All right, so we'll look up here on the uh, whiteboard for a second. I actually brought up this to show you. And what this is, you're looking at uh, an illustration that, that I did for uh, Julia and Melinda Richardson's um, Owen Owl's Wise Words. So this is a page from their book. And I wanted to give you uh, sort of an example here of what we've been talking about. Whenever you're thinking about your finished page, now of course this is finished. It's been penciled, it's been uh, outlined and colored. I want you to notice the elements on this page. The first thing I want you to notice is look at where the words appear. We've got words here and we've got text here or words there. Uh, they're not blocking any of the center images. They're, they're positioned so that uh, they're, they're off-centered just a bit. Now, this is one paragraph, but it's been broken down into two parts. So whenever you're creating your finished page, we want to think about where your words will go. Um, another uh, another uh, example on this page is the setting. Notice that we have the branch extending all the way out here. So we have the branch. We have flowers. The green indicates that it's at least in a forested area, we can tell that there's, a, there's leaves down here at the bottom. The blue up here at the top indicates a sky. All of these elements help to create your setting, which is very important in your story. Okay? Now let's take a look at the main character on this page. This is a macaw, a parrot. His wings are extended, as you can see, going out. His head is pointed towards the viewer. His feet here on the uh, branch which helps make up the setting uh, with his mouth open and so on and so forth. Now you may wonder how is it that an illustrator decides to draw a parrot this way as compared to a parrot simply standing the, there with its wings folded down or looking to the left or right. Well the answer to that really um, is it's up to to the illustrator. Whenever you're designing a page the first thing you want to do is think about those elements. Now I want you to pretend with me that what you're seeing here is a blank piece of paper. So when you created your storyboard, one of the things that you needed to do is use the Marvel method. You want to think about what's going to go on that page, what words will be on that page, for the words help guide you on your content, okay? So be sure and think about this as you go along. I'm going to sketch out now what the penciled version of the page for Owen Al's Wise Words, showing the parrot, would look like if I was doing it all over again on paper. So here we go. 
The first thing that I would do is take, take into consideration the words, what's going to appear on the page. I would do a very rough draft. Let me change the color of that to black. There we go. I would do a very rough sketch. Well, it's still red. <laughs> All right. I would do a rough sketch of what would appear there. I guess we're going to have to stick with red. That's okay. Um, this will be just a very, very rough shape. It almost looks like a bat, doesn't it? Um, of what the body of the main character will look like. The other element then would be the branch coming across the page. This goes up and across. Here we have the leaves appearing over here. And there's all kinds of leaves on the page to show, or flowers too, um, what type of setting or environment that our parrot is found in, okay? Now, once I have all of this together, um, I want to think then where the words will appear. So I think the words were here and here on the finished page. So this was where my text appeared, okay? Now, this is something that needed to be worked on and finished in your storyboard. So this is an example of what your storyboard, a page from that would look like for your finished book. Now the goal of this tutorial and last week's tutorial is taking these weird shapes and putting those onto a finished page. We talked a little bit last week about taking your time. That's really important. Craftsmanship is very important. Had a question today from one of the counties while we conducted the link session and the question was, what uh, type of binding will this book be? Is it going to all be hard case, hard bound, a hard book? And the answer to that is no. The binding that we're going to put together for this program is going to be glued, so perfect bound. Now, I'll reference Ted Hudson's work again, and I'll show you a picture of his work up here. So this is Ted Hudson's um, Noah's Ark. And if you look at this, you're going to notice that the cover itself is, is spread out into two shapes here. We have the back cover and the front cover. This is a hardbound book. What we're going to do, we're going to look at your work when you're finished. We're going to look at your work, and if that work stands out, then we will be considering printing or working to get your book published. That's the goal, but your work has to stand out. You have to put the time in for that. You have to uh, use craftsmanship for this. So it's really important that you take your time on these pages. It's very important that you use craftsmanship, okay? Now, while we have this cover up, I want to show you something. We talked a little bit earlier today about um, your cover. Now, notice on Ted's book, we have a few things here. We have the title over here, so we know exactly what the name of the book is. At the bottom, we have his information, written and illustrated by Ted Hudson. Now, like I said, this book is opened up, so here's the spine of the book running along this way. If your book is chosen to be printed, your information would be here. The title would go here. Your name would be here. On the back, we have a barcode. This barcode is what stores use to scan the book to tell how much it is and information about the book, the author, the illustrator, the publisher, so on and so forth. Next, we have a small blurb or summary of the book. Uh, back on the back here uh, is Ted's summary. And what it says is, Out of the Holy Bible, the story of Noah comes to life through the eyes and talent of Ted Hudson. Journey with him into the book of Genesis and experience this timely story. So this is the title, um, the cover of, of the book. And what's really good about this as an example is it shows you what you could place on your cover. You want to have these elements. You want to have your title, you want to have your name, and you want to have pertinent information about the book's characters and the setting. There's no doubt by looking at the cover of Ted Hudson's Noah's Ark that you see that it's about um, a boat, and there's a man on the boat with a dove. There's a rainbow showing that it must have just rained. And in the far background over here, you see a mountain. So there's dry land. Anyone familiar with the biblical story of Noah's Ark realizes all of these are elements in this biblical story. And, and so that's a great job, a great example. But let's go back now to our whiteboard and, and let's take this into consideration. Um, in your finished pages, you want to think about this as you do the cover, okay? We're going to go ahead and, and, and um, start to draw on top of this now. Now, for your storyboard, you should have all of these elements drawn out in various shapes. You get to fill those in at this point. So your finished page 
you're going to draw in the elements that make up the characters now. So here we'll have the beak, the head coming back this way. Um, here we'll have the eye of the parrot. Okay, and you start adding these details in now. Here's the, uh, the markings going back. Um, the wing will come out this way. All right, you had the various feathers all along the wing. They get longer and longer as we go out. And these are all the little details that you need to complete your finished page. All of these details come together when you're putting together this finished page so that at the end, you, need all, you have all the information you already need. You know what your characters look like through your character design. You have your setting in place. You know what's going to appear on each page. So when you start to do the fine detail, it should all come together. Now we're going to jump over to the table for a second, and I want to show you an example of Yuri Shulvitz writing with pictures. Yuri did an amazing job with this book. He has actually put together here some examples for us. And if you look really close, you're going to see up here at the top, we have the uh, finished um, uh, this is actually a, 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 a really rough draft of what the page would look like. And I'm talking about this top image up here. From there, he shows us then a little more detail. You notice there's less um, uh, lines and, and just scribbles. This, this is starting to look more like shapes now. He's erased a whole lot and starting to get the details to come in. You notice up at the top, too, on this one, he had this um, the wall actually crumbling a little bit so he decided on this one he didn't want that so it's gone now so you make changes as you go along down here at the bottom we can see this is a little more detailed now this looks like almost finished page you still have some rough lines around here maybe some of the uh, uh, the eraser marks or the pencil lines aren't really out of there that well or taken off the page but this is still in a rough draft he's actually created one two three penciled versions in order to come up with the information he needed to create this finished page. This is a great example of a storyboard and, and dummy book layout. The storyboard creates the finished page. This is the process that I hope that each of you are doing right now at this very moment. It's very important to uh, remember to keep in all the various information that you have available to you in your storyboard. It's by using your storyboard that it equips you and enables you to do what we just saw with Yuri's work. Okay? All right. Let's go ahead and take another example here. I'm going to get rid of our, our parrot. I'm going to go back again because I had some questions on the Marvel method and how you use that um, it, with, with doing a finished page. Now, the Marvel method, again, was using these circles. So you have these shapes, and the shapes all go together to form the human body, okay? Or if you're doing an animal, it will go together to form an animal. The shape, just the, just the very basic shapes, okay? Um, now the important thing to remember here is that using the Marvel method in your storyboard doesn't mean that you can't use the Marvel method for your finished book. Um, I brought in today to show you this little guy it's a um, wooden stick figure. I'm sure some of you have seen this before. Uh, you can position it just about any, any way. It has these little uh, bevels on there that, that cause him to uh, move around. He can be formed and shaped in any position that you want. Now, what these are used for with artists is artists will take these and position them. They'll have these actually placed in a certain way and they'll draw that. Let's say you need somebody uh, skateboarding, okay? Or if you need, in our case, we're going to have their character sitting down and he's going to be reading. So we'll position his arms so that he's reading, something like this. All right. Now this is exactly what these little devices are used for. So when you draw the circles, you notice there's not any details on this little guy. He's just shapes. He's circles and um, um, different ovals and all this stuff. So all these little shapes go together in creating um, your, your uh, characters, okay? Alright, so let's go back over here and let's look at what we just created. So here we have the basic structure. His head might be a little too big maybe uh, for a, a, a um, human form. You can use this also, let's say, for a dog. 
Here we'll have the dog's head. Let's draw the body here. Here's one arm. Oh, no, I'm sorry, yeah, leg. And then we have um, the other leg back here and the tail. So you can see how this shape looks nothing like a dog, but when you start to go in and add those details, then you can just add on top of what you have already. So you can put an ear on both sides. You can put his nose up front, his eye, the snout coming out like this, it goes back, so on and so forth. So your shape actually comes together over top of these circles and such, all right? Okay, so there we go. Now, how do you use the Marvel method, though, in penciling your page? That's a question. You still use the same process. The difference is, in your storyboard, you left it right here at this stage. That's all you needed. You just needed to know where your characters are on the page and how they relate to the other parts of the page. That's all. You were creating your, your content for your page. So you knew before ever starting on your pencil page what was going to go there. Now what we're going to do is take that information and create a finished, polished, really good looking page of your book. Okay? You still use the Marvel method though. But like I said, you take it one step further now. And we're going to go through this process together here on the whiteboard. I'm going to show you a couple things. And hopefully you'll see what I mean. Now, I can't stress to you the importance of being able to press down lightly, lightly with your pencil. You're going to make changes. You're going to erase. You're going to make mistakes. All of these things can be corrected at this point right now. Okay, so for the purpose of this, we're going to draw a scene together. I'm going to use blue to represent pencil. So we have a head, okay, let's draw a neck. We have this shape for the torso, a couple more circles for arms. I'm going to actually have this person carrying a book bag. So I'll draw these circles up here. The book bag will be back here like this. The straps will come down, right? Okay. Now, now for the waist. All right, we have our waist area. We're gonna have one leg coming out where they'll be walking. So you draw this oval shape here, draw circles for knees, okay? And then the, this circle actually go back. See how it's going back this way? So you're not gonna be seeing all of this, but you could draw it in. So there's one character. All right, for my setting now, I'm going to use perspective. I'm gonna put this person on a sidewalk you see how the sidewalk comes out now? Um, I may go ahead and put a little bit more lines to help guide me for the sidewalk here. All right, so now let's go ahead and add another character. Over here on the, um, let's say there's a building that comes out like this, goes back in and down. Remember those lines of perspective, how they follow one another, right? Okay, so let's say there's a building here, and over here we have somebody watching or standing um, and just watching the people go by. So we'll draw this shape in here, put it, put the arms down, the torso, the waist. We got ovals for legs. Now this is off into the distance a little, so you can notice I'm making it smaller. Okay, we can put a hat on this person. How's that? Okay. Now this looks absolutely nothing like a finished page of a book yet. So the goal here, though, is going to be to take this and turn it into a finished page for your book. All right, now how we do that? This is all using the Marvel method. We have these shapes. We have these various things that are telling us um, what's on our page. Okay, now all we need to do is go back and start to add in that detail. Now, if you like drawing and illustration and, and, and this sort of stuff, it's amazing to think that there's jobs for this out there. You can do this sort of stuff as a job one day if you wanted to. But the goal for this project is to show um, how much time and effort you're putting into this, okay? It's real important to do your best job. Opportunities like this, doesn't, they don't come around very often, okay? All right, so we have a bunch of circles. And this is supposed to be our finished page. This is not our storyboard. We're pretending that we're looking off our storyboard and we're using these circles to create our finished page. Once you have these circles, I want you to go back then and add the detail. 
Remember, an eraser is your best friend during this process. Next week we'll be looking at color. We touched on color a little bit in the uh, last tutorial. We'll be looking at a little bit of color today, but this is all about penciling your page. So I'm going to use black now as my color, and what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to actually uh, draw over top of the blue here to do the um, to show the detail of our work. Okay, here we go. So here we have the person standing here. You decide stuff at this process like. I think I'm going to give this person long sleeves, okay? All right, so there's one sleeve. And then you say, all right, so now I'm going to add another sleeve. There's another sleeve. We have our hands here, so we got them holding on to their book bag. Draw the book bag straps coming over top. And you can add the book bag back here. Now this is all with pencil. Okay, you're still drawing with pencil. I'm just cho choosing to, uh, I chose to, to draw this in black to help you kind of understand how this comes together. Okay, so now we have detail added. Um, then for the head. Now remember what I told you about the head. It's real important to use these guidelines in there. The guidelines show you where things are going to appear on your character's body. Those guidelines help in this matter. So now we're going to put an ear here, another ear here. Okay, we've got shadow maybe coming down for the uh, where the sun's coming down. We can put the hair here. All right, we got an eye, another eye, eyebrow. Got a nose here, the mouth, and he draw in the rest of the face. Okay, so you can see how this looks. Now we have a character that is. A little more fleshed out. You can see more detail about him and it's starting to come together like a finished page. Okay, now we'll go ahead and work on the leg. Follow your lines. That's all you got to do is follow those lines. And what comes together is, is the actual page. So you have this look to your, to your story now, but once you add this detail in, things really come together. So now we can see how this kind of pulled together and we've created this. Um, more detail out of our basic shapes, okay? And you can go ahead and jump in there and work on the background too. Um, all of this stuff has to be drawn out because what you're going to do after this is color. You're going to add this color on here. You're going to trace over um, what you've created with, with either a pen or a darker color to um, um, draw over top of the pencil lines. Once you have all those things together then you can add color okay but this part you know I could if I was taking my time with this you could see how it would come together more but for the purpose of uh, the video we're just going to kind of put it together the best we can now we'll draw this guy over here wearing his hat um, we'll go ahead and grab a smaller pin line and we'll give him a beard give him suspenders maybe and he's standing here on the street corner Okay, now when you're penciling in your finished page, you're using the Marvel method. The difference though is you're taking it one step further now. You're not only um, drawing with circles and shapes, but you're going to also be adding in this detail. Color would happen at this point where you have all of your lines drawn in, and then you go back in, you erase all of the pencil lines. So you've got your Marvel method with the shapes first. Then with pencil, you add the detail. Then from there, you outline what you're going to keep, what you're not going to erase. If you're using ink, you've got to let that ink dry for a little bit. Then you go back in and erase. After you erase, you have a finished product that looks as if you just took a, um, a, a colored, a colored uh, pencil or, or a, or a um, marker and you went and just drew freehand on the page and it looks really cool. People are like, how'd you do that without sketching? But you erased it all, so they can't tell, right? It's just a little trick of the trade, if you, if you will. All right, so we're gonna jump over to the table now. I wanna show you a few examples of um, using this, uh, um, um, the building blocks here to create your finished page, okay? So let's jump over there now. Um, we have Yuri Shulvitz still pulled up, but 
This is a great example. And if you can reference this stuff, I really highly encourage you to do that. Okay? All right. Earlier today, we looked at one book um, that it's one of my favorites. It's called Bone. Now, Bone is written by, by Jeff Smith. I think that uh, we talked about this a little bit today. Bone is a graphic novel. And I want to show you a couple of the panels in here because you've got to remember, we're, doing with, we're dealing with a few different templates here, aren't we? Where we've got picture books, we've got chapter books, we've got comic books and graphic novel. So here's some examples of the panels. The panels here are all um, uniform, so there's usually there's, uh, six per page. And the great part about it is that he's laid this out for us so that we can see exactly what's going on in six small panels on every page. Okay? Um, so when you're creating your finished page, try to use craftsmanship. That's my main point with this. All right, so here we have um, a blank piece of paper, obviously. I'm going to grab one that's a little bit cleaner. And what we're going to do now, we are going to actually be drawing on the page uh, a finished page, what a finished page would look like for a picture book. And keep in mind, I'm going to be using a storyboard to go by. Uh, in this case, I'm going to be using the storyboard from um, Uri Shulvitz's um, uh, book called um, Haniki Monday. Okay, so here we go. Um, down here at the bottom, I'm going to go ahead and sketch it out like he did. I'm going to have my bed. Now look how fast I'm sketching this. I'm not really taking a whole lot of time to, to make sure that my lines are, are, are straight. Now you could go back at the end of this and use a ruler and make sure that all your lines are, are nice and straight. But for the purpose of this, we're just going to sketch it out. Now you've got to pretend that I'm using a storyboard to go by. Okay, all right, so here we have the bed posts, and he's got some covers that are hanging over the, the railings. Okay, um, I'm going to pencil in. Now, in this part of the penciling, you remember I said to uh, remember to take your time, right? Well, this is the part of the penciling for your finished page that you do it very rough, but it's adding that detail that you take time in. So, we're going to go ahead and put um, the character in the bed there sleeping. Draw the other uh, bed post at the top. Coming over to here. And now we have the four bed posts that we need. We'll draw the covers coming down. Fabric is really hard to draw, but I know um, a few students are really good at it. I've seen visiting the schools and all over our region. I've been to schools in Ohio, Tennessee, Virginia, West Virginia. I've been to over 200 schools and I can tell you right now that some of the best talent that I've seen comes from our region, those counties in the KVEC region. I've even been up to Owen County, out in um, San, San Lick and all these other places. Um, and we have some super talented students in, in our region. I can't wait to see the stuff you create. So pretend with me though that I'm using a storyboard. So all of, see how rough everything is? It's, there's not a lot of detail to this. Uh, not yet anyway. Now rulers come in handy like I said. Um, perspective, notice how the window is um, positioned. You, it looks as if you could go back into this room, doesn't it? Um, so we're going to put some curtains hanging up here. We got the curtains coming down. Now, don't those curtains just look as if they're just right there, just um, hanging out on the sides of the, of the window? They look almost as if they're, you know, supposed to be there. And that's the goal. Use perspective to help guide your stuff. Notice the lines on the window pane. They're right in the middle. This goes straight in. This goes in. This is sort of in the middle. Over here in the background, we have a shelf. So you see how I'm just rough sketching this out? Not, not really trying too hard to make for craftsmanship at this point. Now it's only after we put these little shapes in and draw these little shapes that we'll go back then, okay, and we'll actually put in that detail that makes it really stand out. Now for a published book, that's what really matters. If you want to try to get your story published, you know, it, you don't have to draw like DC or Marvel or, or Disney, but you have to have craftsmanship. Um, 
So we're going to draw these images out. Now let me show you something that, that we kind of referred to earlier today. Um, it's called um, Dinosaur versus the Potty. And what this book is, and we'll come back to this, what this book is is a book by Bob Shea. And Bob Shea is a um, illustrator. He is um, um, worked for Disney. He works for KET now. And um, in this book, I want to show you a little bit what I mean by craftsmanship, okay? Um, so we'll open it up here. And notice here, though, let's look, at the, let's look at the lines on this dinosaur. All right. Now, this looks like a very rough sketch. If you notice right here on the edges, see how the white overlaps the teeth, the red's coming in? It looks like he's just took a marker and scribbled it, okay? Now, this looks like it's fastly done, but he meant for this to happen. He meant for it to look this way. Um, let's take another page for an example. Um, here we go. Look at this. Look at the red around the edges of the, uh, the character. Um, you can see how he didn't come in all the way into the lines. Look how he's went over the line down here. Now this looks like it's a little bit messy, but that's the theme of the book. Even when he drew in the front of this, um, he made this out to me. And you can look here. This is a hand-drawn little dinosaur of his that he uh, put in the front of the book. And you can see that it's just a scribble. but you know, if, if that's your intent for it to look as if you, you just quickly uh, put it together, then that's fine, okay? All right, so we're back here to our page again. This is where we're going to really start to add this detail in, all right? So you want to take your time. If you have a ruler, you want to make sure these lines are nice and straight. You're going to put your ruler down and draw those lines in. Take your time with stuff. For the purpose of the video, I'm going to draw stuff in the best I can, sort of eyeballing this a little bit. And you can see what I mean now with adding the detail. I'm pressing a little bit harder on the page this time. Okay. You can see how the lines stand out more. Now this is pretty much a three-step process. You first scribble it out using the Marvel method with all those circles and shapes and various things. Then from there, you go back with pencil again and you start to add in the detail pressing down a little bit harder this time around. Once you have that detail added in, you're going to then, the third thing, is you're going to go back with um, either a, a darker colored pencil. If you're a cartoonist, you're going to be using a marker, or if you're an illustrator and you're, you're doing a picture or chapter book, you could also use a marker. Then you color, staying within those lines or unless you're Bob, like Bob Shea, and your book is meant to look a little bit sloppy, and that's part of the, you know, the theme to it, if you will, then, you know, you're able to uh, do that and uh, pull it off. That's great, okay? So we're going to have a little boy here sleeping on his pillow. All right, and his shoulder coming up a little bit. You can draw a hand up on the pillow here. Something like this right here, okay? And... You want to put this detail in there. This is, uh, you've got your, your framework to go by. You have everything you need. The shapes are there. You used your storyboard to design the page. Um, everything should be ready for you to resource, as we say, and use. Okay? Here, maybe he's collecting pennies and maybe a, um, a ball. We'll put a little a ball up on the counter and maybe a book or two. Had a book here couple larger books up top. All right, so now we have a shelf. We have, um, here's the uh, dresser. We have one boot anyway. Let's put another boot on here. There we go. Got the boot in here now. There's his shoes. Let's finish up the window. Something like that, okay. Now the detail when you're adding this, you can still erase if you need to, but pressing down a little bit harder, you know, makes it a little bit more difficult to get those lines to disappear at the end. So you may not do this as quick as I am, um, and that's okay. I've been doing this a long time. Uh, just do, do your best to take your time, think out things a little bit before you start drawing. Okay, so now we have a, um, the detail added to the page now. Here's what I'm going to do from this step. From this step here, I'm going to be taking a black magic marker, I'm sorry, a colored pencil, and I'm going to go over these lines, the exact lines I just put on the page, OK? 
okay? I'm going to go over each one of these. And what happens is you can go back at the end and erase all those pencil lines that are there, okay? Now, in the, for the purpose of this page, I want you to think about lighting. Lighting is very important. Um, we're going to be putting some light in. Now, obviously, the light could come from one really obvious place in this, in this page. It could come from uh, the window, right? Or, you know, what if it's nighttime? You could have a window, uh, a door cracked, or maybe this light coming from uh, the lamp. You know, there's different ways to do it, but we're going to set this page up as if it's in the morning time, okay? So what we'll do, we'll draw the character over with the black marker here, put a little bit more um, outline work on here, and then we'll um, show you how the lighting would, how you would show the lighting using um, color, and for cartoonists, even using black. You don't have to use color to show light. You can use black, that's fine. Like I said earlier, I'm not really, you know, not using a ruler here. I'm sort of eyeballing this a little bit for the purpose of the time for the video. But you see the basic idea, okay? Now, if you are using ink to outline your finished page, I do warn you that you want that ink to dry prior to erasing. I have, uh, I've really messed up a couple of times on wait, not waiting, not be, being too impatient, I guess, and, and um, jumping in there and trying to erase those pencil lines before they're ready to be erased, okay? Um, also, another little bit of a, a, a tip, if you are a cartoonist and you do mess up, then you can go back and use white out, okay? White out helps a whole lot. So here we go, now we have, um, everything outlined that we need to outline. So what I would do at this step, I would go back and take an eraser, okay, and go over all the pencil line. And what happens is the pencil line should disappear, especially if you've used a pen or marker to trace this out by, okay. The pencil line goes away and what's left is just these black lines and it looks as if you just sat down and drew this, which is not true. You, you had that framework to go by. So if we had um, an eraser, you see we could go back and, you know, if you're using a colored pencil, you may erase a little bit of your, you put water in it and then you put a little bit of ink, not much ink at all. If you put a little bit of ink, you're going to have a very light gray for a marker. If you use a lot of ink, then it's going to obviously be um, a lot, a lot darker. And I don't know if any of you um, art artists out there know what Copic markers are or Prismacolor markers, but Prismacolor or Copic markers are they're pretty expensive, and they come in all variety of colors. But for the shades of gray up to black, you can get away with buying those markers by buying an aqua brush and putting various amounts of ink in there. So let's jump back to the page here and check out how this looks. Now, if you have access to any of these things, you can use them. Another thing you can do is just take a simple uh, brush. Take a simple brush, take a cup of water, put a drop of ink in it, stir it up, use your brush. So I always like to test out and make sure what kind of, what kind of shade I'm using. So you can see here, that's the shade of gray I'm working with. Move it over, there you go. There's the shade of gray I'm working with for that brush. And for this particular brush, We'll see what color we're, it should be a little bit, yeah, a little bit darker. So you can see, not, not a whole lot, but a little bit darker. Now, as a cartoonist, what you would do, you would go back on this and you would start to add this in for your, uh, to show your light coming in the room. Obviously, if the light's coming in this way, you got to imagine that it's not going to be reflecting off of this surface because this is your wall that's against the light source, right? Okay, so you add that in there and you want it to cover all around the light source, even on the edges of the um, curtains, okay? Just the edges. Notice I'm not going around this area. You can put a little bit up here, you can put a little bit back here, but that's where your light's coming in your room, right there, 
okay? In fact, this entire wall back here should be uh, darkened in, okay? Just as we're doing here. Okay, now, you can imagine then, based on that, where the next uh, gray should be applied. It could go along the posts here, down the side of the bed, down this way, on the um, outsides of the pillows, around his head. You could do the shelf coming in like this so that it shows a little bit of shadow underneath there, around these objects. You can draw this coming down because you can imagine how the light's coming in. Okay, draw a little bit here. Of course, all of this down here would be dark. This bed would be dark here. The bottom of these posts would be, of course, under his bed would be really dark. So I'd, I squeezed the pen a little bit, so it gave me more uh, uh, ink coming out this time. That's what happened just then. If you noticed, it got really dark. Now, there's a cutoff point right here because you can imagine that the light's coming in like this, so it's going to touch this floor, right? You can add it on the opposite side of the lamp here. Here's our light coming in our room, right? And, of course, down here at the bottom of the bed, we're going to have a lot of dark down here. So you can see how this kind of comes together now. We have um, using just um, gray to show light. Cartoonists use these types of markers a lot. You may have noticed this on a few of your favorite cartoons or illustrations and wondered how it's done. Well, now you know how it's done. Um, and for the boots here, draw the shadow for those. Well, what we've done now is created basically um, a finished page of, of a book. This could be in an illustrated book on there. Let me see your work. Remember, it's all about you. Um, one thing that I tell students when I go to every school, I'm nobody special, not a bit. The only reason that I'm here doing this stuff is because I took a little bit time out of my day and worked on it for a very long time. If you were to do that starting off in third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and on up grades, by the time you get to my age, you could blow my stuff out of the water. In fact, some of you may already do that. And I'm really hoping that you do because I want to see your work. I want to get your work published. All right, thank you so much for participating. Hope you take it seriously, and I'll see you in the classroom.